Hey guys, how are you? I'm George with American Male Wellness, and today we want to talk a little bit about how to inject testosterone, how to load the testosterone, what type of syringes you're going to use, the gauge of syringe or needle that you're going to use, and, and of course a good technique and where you can actually inject t testosterone safely and, and obviously um, we don't want to cause any infection either. So, so I'm going to get started here. Um, I have a few things on the tray here that I want to show you. Obviously, you're going to have your testosterone, okay? And whatever that source is, we happen to use Precision Specialty Pharmacy for our source of testosterone. Um, also, some alcohol wipes. And then, of course, I have two different types of syringes here. They're both Lorlock, actually uh, three different types. One is a Lorlock 1 mlc or 1 cc. Another one is a Lorlock, which is 3 ml syringe, all right? And that's a 20 gauge, one inch syringe, and that comes with a needle attached. Here I have a 25 gauge, one inch needle that we're going to use for injection. And I also have another draw needle that's actually a 22 gauge one inch that I'll use to draw the, the testosterone out of the vial. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get started here and kind of show you. And then at the end, I'm going to go over a little bit of uh, maybe what you shouldn't do and why you shouldn't use an insulin syringe to, for testosterone. I know that's a common thing that's out there right now, but I'd like to show you why you shouldn't do that. So to get started... What I usually do here is the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that everything's clean and, uh, you know, using good septic technique here. So, um, and I usually clean with alcohol and I leave the alcohol pad on there. Obviously, I want to kill any bacteria that's there for a uh, length of time. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to open up both of these packages for you just so you can see. This syringe is a lower lock without the needle, okay? And it goes to 1 ml, all right? And, and the reason why I use the smaller syringe is for smaller microdosing, anything that's under 1 cc, okay, or 1 ml dosing, all right? And the testosterone we're using today is, approximate, is, is actually uh, concentrated at 200 milligrams per ml. So... Let's say, for instance, I had someone that's going to uh, do a 100 ml or 100 milligram per week. That would be a half of ml, all right? So that's how we would measure that. So let me go ahead and get started here. So now what I do is I have this syringe here, and I'm going to take my 22 gauge needle, okay? I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to screw that onto the Laura lock, okay? And then from there, I'm just going to pull back the plunger a little bit. Everybody see that? All right. And then I'm going to take the cap off. Obviously, I'm going to take the alcohol off the top of the, the vial. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert into the center of that vial and um, push that additional air in there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is pull back. On this on the syringe plunger, I'm going to watch that load. And again, just so that everybody understands, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, you know test uh, today testosterone dose of uh, 100 milligrams, which would be 0.5 for this concentration. So I'm going to pull past that 0.5 a little bit, okay, so everybody can see that. And then of course I'm going to plunge out any additional air till I get the dosage that I need. And as everybody can see, I'm at 0.5. Okay, so once I have the appropriate dose in the syringe, I'm gonna then turn this over and pull my syringe out. Now granted, I'm just gonna pull the remainder of that oil out of the syringe that I used, or the needle that I used to load, okay? I'm gonna then recap. This is not the needle that I'm going to use to inject myself with. Okay. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to open up my 25 gauge. And the reason why I use a 1 ml syringe, a less circumference, is because I can use a finer needle to inject with. All right. And this means it would be more comfort. And that's why I use that. 
All right, and then you'll see later on this is this is the best method. So this particular needle, the one I drew from, gets removed, and the one I will inject will be added to the syringe. Okay, so now today, I mean, so now this this syringe is ready for injection. Okay. Now today I'm not going to actually inject myself, but what I want to do is I want to leave this here for a second, and then I want to kind of go to my next syringe that I have here. And the reason why I want to show this is because any of you that's actually using over 1 ml, let's say the concentration of your testosterone happens to be 50 milligram per ml, okay? And let's say you need to do 100 milligram a week. Well, on this syringe, this is a 3cc syringe, okay, or a 3ml syringe. So ultimately, if you're going to do more than one, you couldn't use the smaller circumference syringe. So you would have to use one that allows for more to draw. Now, you can see that this circumference of this syringe is a lot larger, all right? So that allows for more volume. In addition, obviously, this syringe comes with a needle on top that you can use to draw. And again, you can always take this syringe off, all right, and use another syringe, another needle to actually inject with. So, great, George. So now what I want to do is actually show you some injection technique, okay? And where we can start is on the, the quadricep, all right? So I know that's a lot easier for guys. And I'm going to take this needle off here, and I'm going to actually just use this syringe to actually show you uh, injection technique. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to sit on the couch for a second, all right? And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of visualize. And of course, here's my knee, and here's my hip, okay? I'm going to split my leg long ways in half, and I'm going to split my leg here in half. And what I want you to understand is now you have four quadrants, okay? Where you're going to eject is going to be the upper outer quadrant of the quadricep. It's where we have the least amount of vascularity and the least amount of nerve nerves here, okay? So less damage, less chance of infection, okay? So with that said, what you're going to do is, once you have your needle loaded, okay, excuse me one second, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to pretend here for a second, all right, I'm going to take an alcohol pad, and I'm going to clean that area thoroughly, okay? From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the skin, okay, in that area, taking my syringe, I'm going to plunge it through the skin. Okay, as you can see, I'm in that upper outer quadrant of the quadricep. From there, I'm going to slowly push the volume in, okay? And then I'm going to remove the syringe, okay? Now, if there's any blood or anything that's here, okay, obviously you're going to want to clean again with alcohol. And then if you need a Band-Aid or anything. So that would be that would be a typical quadricep. And you could do that in either one. Just split your quadricep into quadrants. Okay? Upper outer quadrant on the right side. Upper outer quadrant on the left side. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with the quadricep, we can always do the deltoids. All right? Or we can do the glutes. So... How I like to do, or how I've seen the best method of doing your shoulders is a lot of times guys, you know, they, they try to reach. And what happens is they, they tend to flex their deltoids, okay? Some guys can't reach. So what I like to do is, and if you can, I don't know if you can see this, but I like to do is I like to lean on something, okay? And of course, you're doing this yourself now. So, you know, it's, it's, you have to improvise a little bit. So you have to feel comfortable with doing the injection yourself. So again, you take in your syringe, all right? And I want you to just to let this arm hang. So there's no flexing, okay, of, of the, the medial deltoid. And 
At this point, you're going to again take, let me just, procedurally you want to clean the area, okay? All right. Once the area is clean, okay, then you're going to go two to three fingers down from this bone in your shoulder here, and you can feel it, okay? And this would be the end of the clavicle here in, uh, in the shoulder. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that position that's right in the center of the medial deltoid, okay? And again, what you're going to do is you're going to push and inject, okay? Again, the arm, there's no flexing of that muscle, all right? And I found that this to be the easiest technique for guys to be able to inject into their deltoid. All right. So if the quadriceps or the deltoid is not a good place for you, all right, you can always do the gluteal muscle. Gluteal is a little bit different. It's a little bit difficult, okay, for some guys. And here I'm just going to raise up my, my pant, my shirt here for a little bit, just so you can see. All right. And again, you know, this is a family video, so I'm going to keep my pants on here for everyone. But for the most part, you find your hip bone, okay? And you're going to go two, two fingers down, two fingers back. So you're going to find that edge of that glute med, okay, the medial portion of your gluteal muscle, all right? And from there, what you're going to do is, again, you're going to clean the area thoroughly with alcohol swab, Okay. What you want to do is you want to take the pressure, the weight, and you want to put it on the opposite leg. So this way, the gluteal muscle is not flexed. And again, by measuring those two fingers and two fingers back, you can pretty much find the meat of that gluteal muscle. Okay? And again, this is now, usually you would want to use a, a, a mirror if you like, but you can actually inject here. Okay? And this would be the best place to inject if you could do it. And of course, if you can't do it yourself, you can have your spouse or your girlfriend or whomever wants to help you with this. And that would be the best place to inject, I think, overall. All right. Both sides. All right. So that's it. That's pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Now, granted, the only thing I want to mention to you is don't always inject in the same spot. You will build up scar tissue, of course. If you're injecting once a week, you can switch glutes, you know, left side, right side, left side, right side for your shoulders, and of course, left side, right side for your quadriceps. So you're never really injecting in the same place twice over the week period. Obviously, you may be somebody that likes to inject more often or smaller doses. A lot of times with testosterone, what, what occurs is some guys metabolize and they break down the, the esterase and the testosterone very quickly. So some guys like to keep that blood, that blood level higher for a longer period of time, so they take less more often. And that's something we can, you know, we can always help you with and discuss, you know, based on your, your diagnostics at American Mental Wellness. So, um, but one more thing I'd like to mention before we go here today, guys. And, and I see this a lot. And I know there's, again, a segue from, you know, what we spoke about microdosing. There's a lot of gentlemen out there that have, you know, been told that I can inject testosterone subcutaneously, you know, you know, just under the skin with a smaller syringe. It's more comfortable. I could do it every day and I do a lot less um, on a daily basis. And although that is true, okay, we, we can do that. You can inject daily smaller microdoses every day. And for some guys that works really well. But the injection technique that they use doesn't, okay? They're, they're not getting a, an intramuscular injection. They're not getting into the muscle. This, the, the oil is getting trapped in the adipose tissue in a subcutaneous injection. And a lot of times you're seeing a lot of abscess and infection. And, and also, to be able to use an insulin syringe such as this one, what I see a lot of guys do, it's very difficult because here's the, here's the issue with this, right? At this point, I can't lower lock this. This needle is stays on here and it doesn't come off. All right. And it's very, very small. So to actually load oil base into this syringe, it's very difficult because this needle is very fine. So it's almost impossible for me to actually pull anything out of this because the viscosity of this oil 
is not going to come into, it's not going to be a load, right, into the syringe. This is made for more aqueous or water-based insulin, right, which is a lot thinner and goes in a lot easier. That's not the major concern because I know you guys are out there going, well, you know how I do it? I backload it. And I've heard this so many times. This syringe right now as we speak with the cap on and the cover on came out of a sterile bag. Okay, so it's sterile at this point, and that's important, okay? Now, once I take this off, once I take this off, I'm ready to inject. However, what guys do is, well, I'll just backload it, which means they pull the plunger, okay, completely out of the syringe, all right? And then what they do is they draw the, the medication out with another syringe, okay, what they do with this while they're doing that, I don't know. And they fill the syringe backwards. Okay. Sounds like a plan, right? Okay. Then what they do is they put the plunger back in and voila. Now I can inject. Unfortunately, as soon as you pull this plunger out of this sterile syringe, it is not sterile anymore. And unfortunately, this can cause major issues. This can cause infection, can cause some problems. I do not recommend this. I know there's a lot of guys out there that do this and seem okay with it. Um, again, don't recommend this, okay? So guys, try to stay away from the insulin syringes. Now granted, as I said before, okay, you can use, this is one ML, this is one ML. So these syringes do come Laurel lock. Laurel lock basically means that this needle comes off the syringe. And then you can put whatever size needle you'd like to put on here for injection and comfort purposes. And whether you want to do one a half ml or a, a you know 0.2 or 0.1, these are measured the same as this insulin syringe. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of not to use these type of syringes, but to use a Laurel lock. And again, you can pull the syringe off and use a smaller gauge needle, that makes it a lot more comfortable. And this way you can do your multiple injections during the course of the week. If you feel more comfortable keeping that blood serum level, you know, more balanced throughout the course of the week. If you're one of those guys that actually feel the testosterone for the first two or three days and then you kind of taper off. And, and I would recommend that you would do something that would allow you to be able to have more comfort doing more injections during the week. So. That's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to make mention of them in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Um, we're putting content out there all the time that could be helpful for you. Again, um, I like to hear some suggestions about some content or questions that you have. And we can always um, inform you in that way. So, uh, been great. Again, I'm George from American Male Wellness. Appreciate you listening today. And we'll see you soon.